Hello and welcome to the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on makerspaces and copyright. When Sandy was a kid, creativity was a constant. Sandy was always coloring with crayons, banging on pots and pans to make music, and building strange creations out of leftover cardboard boxes. As an adult, Sandy is just as creative, but increasingly finds that they don't always have the technology for what they want to create. Luckily, Sandy can use the local library's makerspace. Libraries, both public and academic, have embraced the DIY ethos by building makerspaces with a range of technologies from 3D printing and scanning to audio and visual editing tools. However, the work created in makerspaces can be subject to a range of copyright issues not encountered with other library services. Copyright chill can stop creative work dead in its tracks. However, with a few pieces of advice, Sandy can ensure that their creativity is not hampered by the fear of infringing copyright. Here are some basic principles for Sandy to keep in mind. One important consideration is whether your use of the makerspace is for personal or commercial purposes. While personal use does not mean that there are no copyright concerns, using a makerspace for commercial purposes, and specifically a 3D printer or scanner, significantly complicates the analysis and may also implicate trademark, patent, and industrial design issues. A second key consideration is whether you are incorporating third-party content. One important exception to infringement in Canadian copyright law for makerspaces is the non-commercial user-generated content exception. In addition to requiring non-commercial use, it requires that the user has reasonable grounds to believe that the source material that they are using is not infringing copyright. But what might constitute reasonable grounds that the materials are not infringing copyright? Content that has been authorized for reuse, provided directly from the copyright holder, for example via their website, or content that was purchased or licensed from the source is a reasonably good starting point. On the flip side, one should be more cautious just taking images from a Google search or copying material off a CD or DVD. Thirdly, and related to the last point, you can't pick a digital lock or in more legal terms, circumvent a technological protection measure and use the content. Under Section 41 of the Copyright Act, regardless of the purpose and with only a few minor exceptions, if you circumvent a technological protection measure or pick a digital lock, you may be infringing copyright. For example, if Sandy wanted to copy a scene out of their favorite Hollywood movie and paste it into a movie they are making with makerspace equipment, then they would likely have to circumvent a technological protection measure. While a scene from a movie playing on a computer could easily be screen captured, this could be considered a circumvention of either the content scrambling system that prevents copying of contents on DVDs and Blu-rays, or download restrictions placed on video streaming services like Netflix and YouTube. Another basic principle to keep in mind is that there are three key sections of the Copyright Act that often apply to makerspace activities. Fair dealing, non-commercial user-generated content, and the format shifting exception, all found in Section 29 of the Copyright Act. With these basic principles and copyright exceptions in mind, let's see where Sandy might run into copyright concerns and how these can be resolved. But remember, the following serves only as a guide for general considerations. The specific context in each case will have to be examined. Sandy likes creating new miniature models, and thankfully 3D printing is a common makerspace technology. Sandy tends to print things that they either create themselves using CAD software or from designs found on common 3D printing sites like Thingiverse. Sandy usually finds that the designs on Thingiverse are often covered by an open license. Most of Sandy's makerspace activities are fairly benign from a copyright perspective. However, they should be careful when printing 50 or more copies of a design on a 3D printer as it may implicate industrial design protection. While 3D printing is generally straightforward, copyright issues related to 3D scanning can be much more challenging. If Sandy wants to use a 3D scanner in conjunction with a 3D printer to scan and then print something just to avoid buying it, then the 3D scanning process may be more likely to infringe copyright, depending on the object being scanned. However, if Sandy wants to scan one of their old models they created to improve it, well, that's fine. It's not just miniature models that Sandy needs the makerspace for. Sandy is also an author. Fortunately, book printing machines are another common makerspace technology. If Sandy wants to print books they wrote and own the rights for, of course there are no concerns. 
But if they want to print books still covered by copyright or incorporate copyright protected material such as images, then it's important to consider how exceptions like fair dealing and non-commercially user-generated content may apply. Assuming that the book is not for commercial purposes, the user-generated content exception should provide a fair bit of room for Sandy to remix and incorporate others' copyright-protected materials. Author, modeler, did we mention that Sandy is also a film aficionado? Again, Sandy can rely on the makerspace for access to digital conversion tools. As with book printing and 3D printing, if Sandy is simply interested in converting their own content, in this case, old family movies, then copyright concerns are unlikely to arise. But what if Sandy comes in and wants to convert their favorite VHS copy of Do the Right Thing to DVD? While this may seem like a prima facie case of infringement that Sandy should avoid, under Section 2922 of the Copyright Act, Sandy can shift media across formats subject to a number of conditions, including that the original was legally obtained, no digital locks are circumvented, and the reproduction is not given away, and that it is done solely for private purposes. While it's a long list of conditions, Sandy meets them all, so no concerns. Sandy's creativity is boiling over with all they can do in the makerspace, inspiring them to explore filmmaking more seriously. For this, Sandy will need to use the digital creation spaces within makerspaces, which can include both sound booths and green screens. Again, a fair bit of what occurs here with third-party content will be covered by fair dealing and non-commercial user-generated content. What if Sandy wanted to use the makerspace to convert their old home videos into a brand new musical using some classic public enemy beats and load it up to YouTube? The non-commercial user-generated content exception was designed to support just this type of creation, provided that Sandy isn't planning on generating revenue from the YouTube channel. One thing to note, though, that while Canadian copyright law may allow this, YouTube's own copyright detection algorithms may not. The final point is worth re-emphasizing. There are a number of flexible provisions in the Canadian Copyright Act, particularly the user-generated content exception, that do not apply in non-Canadian contexts and may not be recognized by the United States or other content intermediaries. Overall, though, betwixt Sandy's creativity, the makerspace's tools and technology, and some flexible provisions in the Copyright Act, Sandy can be just as creative as when they were three. You should now be able to identify the four important considerations for dealing with copyright concerns in makerspaces, understand the relevance of the non-commercial user-generated content exception to makerspace activity, and describe the limitations on creative activity in makerspaces imposed by digital locks or anti-circumvention protection for technological protection measures. This has been the University of Alberta's opening up copyright instructional module on makerspaces and copyright. Thank you for your attention.